these nuts. What's up, Chromies? I know I don't have your attention for long, so here's me mining sand, so your zoomer brain has something to look at. It is now time for me to read to you from the Book of Autism, aka GNU slash Linux. So last week, I made a video, oh wait, I almost forgot my intro. What is going on you guys? It's, it's your boy, boy. GNU slash Zoomer here, and we're back. So about a week or so ago, I made a video that was enough to fondle the balls of the YouTube algorithm and get me some algo juice in my face. And so now I'm cucked into making an installation guide for my desktop setup on Arch Linux. And since I don't want an army of neckbeards chirping me for eternity, I'm going to gear this towards normie Windows users that have been red-pilled on privacy. This means this is not a red-pilling on why you should use Linux or GNU plus Linux. That is an exercise left to the reader, and a trivial one at that. So the dumbest thing I can do is to make like a two-minute video of me installing my configurations that you can watch while you eat. So instead, I'm putting on my critical thinking hat, and if I explain all the software and configurations that I actually use, you might actually have a fucking clue what happens and dare I say, understand what's going on. Nice car. It also might deter people from saying that my setup steps don't work because fair warning that your mileage may vary. With that out of the way, since I'm making this for Windows users, you first need to get out of your head that everything has a cute little icon and a GUI. Remember, chads use the command line because GUIs are gay. This is actually what the acronym stands for. You don't need to verify this. But seriously, Windows and Mac all come with nicely packaged settings, menus, and applications that all do a pretty half-assed job of what you actually want to do with your computer. Bruh. In the world of Linux, the power is in your hands. Because after all, you're the motherfucker that paid for the computer, not Billy and not Timmy. So you should own it, not them. That being said, it does require you to get a little bit more familiar with the terminology of computers and get more comfortable troubleshooting. Unless you want to be spoon-fed malware by people who don't have your best interest in mind. Here's a speed run of all the software I use on my system, but you can use whatever the fuck you want. First things first, the operating system. Arch Linux. It's this logo, gets everybody horny, myself included. It's a rolling release distro or operating system characterized by having one of the best wikis, best package managers, but also most toxic community on the entire internet, second only to maybe 4chan, although many would say these are one and the same. Next up we have the display server and the compositor, or in words that are less technically accurate but make a lot more sense, the desktop manager and the window manager. These are responsible for putting and organizing shit on your screen, setting up your hardware like your monitor or your Bluetooth devices, plus your key bindings and a bunch of other shit. Beyond this, all the software for my setup is pretty much plug and play, but I'm gonna go through what I use. First with the status bar or this task bar on the side that manages my workspaces, this is called Waybar. I like to keep it nice and minimal. Next is the terminal manager, it's called Alacrity, GPU powered, it's enough said. My file manager, which is like your file explorer if you're coming from Windows, is called Thunar. It's lightweight and customizable, gets the job done. Next is my application launcher, it's called Rofi. This is basically like your search bar in Windows or your launch pad in Mac. This is where you can launch applications from another application. Nice. Honestly, I really only use this if I forgot if I installed something or not. Everything else is a key binding. Next up is my notification manager. It's called Dunst. I hate notifications, so I'm not even sure why I have this, but I suppose you can customize this to your needs or just delete it. Now for the GUI software you might be more familiar with. My browser of choice is Firefox or Tor. Image editing I do in GIMP. Any kind of document or text editing I'll do in NeoVim, or if I'm a huge bitch I'll use VS Codium. <laughs> If it's like a PowerPoint or something stupid, I'll have to use LibreOffice. My torrenting client is Qubit Torrent. KeePassXE is my password manager. You should have one if you don't. OBS for screen recording. Newsboat is my RSS reader. It's how I consume content. And I'm currently switching from Thunderbird to Neomutt as my email client. Both Newsboat and Neomutt are terminal-based readers instead of GUI-based ones. If you can't tell, I'm trying to get myself to use the terminal a lot more. And lastly, my performance manager, which is like your task manager if you're coming from Windows, is called BTOP. If you're not sure what any of this stuff means or what it does, 
Why don't you please just speak English? Uh, you can just look them up. A lot of them are pretty straightforward, but you also don't have to use any of this if you don't want to. You can use what you're comfortable with. It is, of course, until you get your head out of your ass, because obviously I'm using the best stuff. So now that you got the gist of all the software down, we're gonna go through the steps of actually installing Arch Linux. Now I'm not gonna get too detailed here because if you wanna do things right, you should just follow the wiki or one of the thousands of tutorials that are already out there. I also don't have a camera to record me installing it on my hardware, so you'll have to just live through this virtual machine recording and me describing what to do. First things first, we need to prepare our installation media, which is basically a fancy way of saying we need to prep a USB to use it to install our operating system. If you can remember in the days of Windows 95, your parents probably installed that with either a CD or a floppy disk. This is basically the same thing as that, except it's not 1995 anymore, so we're gonna use USB stick. The other thing you'll need is some kind of host PC. This can be your current Windows partition or just another spare laptop you have. You'll use this and a flashing software like Rufus or Belina Etcher to flash the ISO file onto a USB so you can install it. The ISO file you can get from archlinux.org. If you are a Chad, you can torrent the file using a torrenting client. Otherwise, you can just download it from one of the mirrors on the website. Doesn't really matter which one. They're all pretty much the same. So now that you have your disk image file, which is your ISO file, you have a spare USB that you don't mind wiping, and you have Rufus or Belina Etcher. You will now use Rufus or Belina Etcher to wipe and format the flash drive to make it a bootable USB so you can boot Arch Linux from the flash drive. Now to boot into this system, you'll want to restart your computer, but you want to enter the boot menu. So this will differ depending on what kind of computer you have. Um, some computers, it is the F12 key or the F2 key or the F1 key. Um, you'll have to look it up or just try a bunch of different keys. My strategy is I just reboot the computer and I hold pretty much all the function keys at once and I'm bound to get the boot menu at some point. Once you're in the boot menu, you'll want to select the correct device to boot from. So you should be able to recognize which device is your USB because by default it'll want to boot from your hard drive. Um, there are still a number of resources and tutorials online about switching the boot order but you may need to do this. At the end of the day you want to boot from the USB and you should arrive at a screen like this. You could technically do this whole installation on a virtual machine uh, in VirtualBox first, but I know that you are a brave soul, so I'm assuming you'll be doing this on hardware. So once you're in, you'll see a bunch of Hacker Man stuff like this. This is just getting ready for the install, and once you're in, this is the welcome screen for Arch Linux. Now keep in mind, this doesn't mean that you've installed it all the way. This is just that you've booted it off the USB and now you actually need to install it onto your hardware. Now unironically the best advice I can give here is actually to not follow my steps and to just use the Arch Wiki to do this. There are, seriously honest to God isn't a better way for you to learn and understand the install and to do it correctly for your hardware than to just follow the wiki. But if you're lazy, you can follow my steps. So first thing to do is to get an internet connection. And the easiest way to do this is just through an ethernet cable. But if you don't have one, I would recommend using the IWCTL CLI tool. It is the easiest and most straightforward to me. Um, the commands I'll put on the screen that I use, but again, the best recommendation here is just to use the wiki because I don't have the patience to explain all of these commands. You can't do it! You're a piece of shit! To check if your Wi-Fi is working, you can just ping something. So this is a command I use just to ping new.org and if you're getting if you're getting 64 bytes back, that means that your internet connection is working. Now for the actual installation, again my formal recommendation is that you just follow the wiki, but the lazy man's way of doing this is using the arch install script. So you can just type in arch install into your terminal and this will pull up the script as long as your ISO file is relatively new. What the script does is just automate all of the manual commands that you would be entering in if you did it manually, again the recommended way, but the arch install script makes it go quite a bit faster. I'm not going to go through the arch install script either, but uh, I, it's a great tool that speeds up arch installs a lot. I've been doing it on, I've been doing it on screen uh, this whole time. You can expect the manual install to take anywhere from one to three hours, depending on how much you fast you can read and fast you can follow the wiki. The Arch install script, uh, even if you don't know anything about computers, should only take up to about an hour for you to get all the way through it. So again, depending on how much time you want to invest, 
Now, once you're done either with the manual install or going through the Arch install script, you should be at a base minimal installation of Arch and it should look like this. Congratulations, you have installed Arch Linux. And now to install the dot files, you will first need to install Git and the base developer tools. So you can do that with your package manager, which is called Pacman. This is a command for installing Git and the base developer tools that Git needs to clone repositories off GitHub. Then you can run a quick git-v just to make sure that you have it installed. It should print out the version of Git that you're running. This just confirms that you've installed it. Now for another curveball. I'm actually going to recommend you not install my dot files with my installation scripts only because I didn't spend too much time on the scripts and they're really not that good. You're likely to run into errors. There are tons of scripts out there, especially in my readme. There are at least 20 other dot files configurations that probably have scripts that work better than mine. Um, but again, if you want to take parts of my scripts and use it in yours, you can do that. Um, so you can clone my repo and then just pull the folders over. Either way, I would not recommend using my scripts because they are junk. Regardless, here is the command and the URL to clone my GitHub repository where my two installation scripts lie. So you can run this command and it should clone the repo. Once you've done that, you can change directory into the .files directory with the cd command. And then there are two .sh scripts, which are shell scripts that are used to install the dot files. This first install.sh installs yay, which is a helper for Pacman, and also installs all of the software packages. So if you look inside the script, you can actually see all the names of the software that will install and what it does. It's not very sophisticated. The second is simlink.sh, and this basically just creates a link between the folders in this dot file directory with the actual configurations that your computer uses, which are inside the dot config folder. Um, so this is just creating a link between the dot files folder that you're cloning and the dot config folder that your computer uses to generate the configurations. You can run these one right after the other doing the dot slash and then the name of the script. I'm so it should look like this. Just make sure you're inside of the dot files directory. Once everything is finished installing on both the scripts, you should be prompted to do a sudo reboot. So you just type in sudo reboot and then you should be booted back into a system that looks like this. This is the login screen for my dot files. You can then log in using your credentials, which should be your name. Mine is just rusty along with whatever your root password is, which you should have set that during your Arch installation. Last but not least, you can start Hyperland by just typing in Hyperland like this. And if everything worked properly, you should be on a desktop setup just like this. So this is my home screen. On the left is my taskbar where my workspaces are. They're numbered. Um, and you can get comfortable with all the workspaces just by using them. But I'm going to bring up a terminal. And the first thing you'll want to type in is just for keys. And these will just show you all the key bindings that you have access to. You can change these all you want. But these are just basically what opens programs, moves around windows and workspaces and different things. Uh, like that. The next one is docs. These are my, this is my readme uh, from the GitHub file. This has all uh, all the other dot files as well as a bunch of information about the configurations that you'll want to know as well. And the last thing I'll bring up is just my bash RC file, which is shortcuts you can use in the terminal to bring up different programs. This is where actually the keys and docs commands are, but this is the last thing you want to do. Otherwise, the rest is up to you. It's up to you to really get comfortable with the key bindings and how to use and open different software, but this is a super quick demo into mine, but yeah, the rest is up to you. Sorry. So I know that this entire guide was pretty half-hearted. I didn't really show a bunch of stuff in detail, only because there are too many details for me to cover in any timely manner. And honestly, true learning is hard and really boring. So I don't think it'd be in your best interest for me to just show super nice bubbly ways of doing things because they are, are very, very difficult. But either way, I hope this is just a good high level overview into my dot files configurations as well as configurations as a whole. Again, if you're, I'd honestly recommend using someone else's install scripts and their dot files and patching together your own through the different configurations you like. Personally, I think uh, compared to other people's configurations, my, my way bar is very, very limited. Um, I, my styles are also limited and I generally have a very minimalist setup to mine, which is something that I like, but I think everyone is going to have their own preferences. So if you really want to be a true Chad Linux user, 
I'd recommend just making your own version of dot files, but feel free to fork different parts of mine that you like and find other ones that you like. And ultimately it should be a journey of learning and not just about copying somebody and complaining if something doesn't work because I'm warning you that my scripts <laughs> probably will not work for you. Anyway, um, that's going to be it for this video. If you want a specific um, software overview or if you want me to go into detail on a specific tool or, or command that I used, I'd be happy to do so. But honestly, this video would have been about 10 hours long if I had gone into all the detail that was necessary for, to learn, for you to learn about each and everything that I mentioned today. So this was a super, super high level overview and was probably factually wrong on some levels, but I know. So let me know if you want to see anything specific. But until then, peace out and fuck Windows. Yo, your boy Bobby here, nigga. Do what you gotta do. Fuck me.